Welcome to another episode of NIF Australia's Israeli Election Preview. We're only two weeks away from the upcoming election, but election news has largely taken a back seat recently to flare-ups on Israel's northern border with Hezbollah and in the south with Hamas, as well as a terror attack which killed an 18-year-old yeshiva student near the West Bank settlement of Migdal Oz. But here are three interesting election stories. There's been a steady drip of details of Benjamin Netanyahu's corruption investigation by Israeli journalists. Channel 12 journalist Guy Peleg has been reporting on the investigations and recently aired damaging details about testimony from a witness about how the Prime Minister allegedly intervened in business decisions which benefited an Israeli tycoon. Peleg was part of a Netanyahu campaign in April's election to delegitimize the media, with Likud hanging billboards with faces of journalists saying, they won't decide, you'll decide. This time, Netanyahu went even further, urging a boycott of the station and even asking the Central Elections Committee to intervene, which it refused to do, on the basis that the news reports about the investigations were meant to sway the election. Waves of threats against Peleg surfaced on social media, to such an extent that Channel 12 allocated the journalist a security detail and President Ruvi Rivlin warned against incitement and personal attacks. In other news, Ayman Odeh, the head of the Joint Arab List, boldly claimed that he'd be willing to back the formation of a centre-left government with Benny Gantz as Prime Minister. Although Arab-Israeli parties have usually performed well in Israeli elections, they've never been formally included in a governing coalition. Odeh's requirements for giving the Blue and White Party his support after the election include a willingness to restart negotiations with the Palestinian leadership in Ramallah, increasing budget allocations to local authorities in Arab villages, which typically receive less than similarly sized Jewish ones, stopping the demolition of Bedouin homes in the Negev, and abolishing the nation state law. Blue and white leader Benny Gantz, for the record, wasn't so welcoming, saying he would only enter a coalition with Zionist parties, apparently excluding most Arab-led parties. Next, just before April's election, Netanyahu went all out to appease his right-wing base, saying he would look to extend Israeli sovereignty to Israel's settlements in the West Bank, both the contained blocks of settlements, often close to the Green Line, as well as the isolated, sometimes illegal outposts. Doing so would blow up decades of stated Israeli and internationally agreed policy, threatening Israel's democratic character. After the election, he tried to walk it back. His advocates said that you campaign in poetry and govern in prose. He just said it to win the election. He didn't actually mean it. So would you believe it? Just a few days ago, Netanyahu reinforced again his desire to trash any future for a Palestinian state and look to annex Israeli settlements in the West Bank. And now to a recent poll, so we can get a sense of what Israelis are thinking just two weeks out from the election. Numbers have been pretty consistent since the start of the campaign, showing neither the right-wing religious coalition makeup nor the centre-left Arab party bloc achieving the 60 seats needed for a ruling majority. Likud would still get the most number of seats, with 32. But Avigdor Lieberman, polling at roughly double what he got in the last election, is a massive thorn in Netanyahu's side, saying he will, in the first instance at least, advocate for a national unity government between Benjamin Netanyahu and Benny Gantz. The joint Arab list will pick up an extra seat compared to April, a bit lower than they'd want given they're running on a unity ticket in this election, while the merits-led Democratic Union would get seven seats, consigning Labour Gesher to six seats, equal to Labour's showing in April, which was the worst in their history. On Thursday the 19th of September, NIF Australia is running a webinar to process and analyse the results from the election with, yet again, former Deputy Speaker of the Knesset, Nomi Khazan. The link is in the post, so make sure you register to join us from 7.30pm Sydney and Melbourne time to get a sense of what's actually happened and how the results will play out in terms of coalition negotiations. Remember to keep watching our Facebook and Twitter feeds for regular updates. Thanks for watching.